Mary Ann Polisi, followed by Peter Tim. Thank you so much, Mary Ann Polisi, 1529 South Palmway. Um, in regard to the Silver Homes, I want to give a huge thank you to Vice Mayor Scott Maxwell and Commissioner Andy Amoroso for diligently following up going to Tallahassee and going to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, we have a huge problem, as you know, uh, with over 250. And, and honestly, in my neighborhood, I think they think that I can just look on my nose and make them disappear. And you all know that that's not possible. I'm not I'm a genie. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Mayor Pam, you're phenomenal. We love you. Thank you. All the commissioners do a fabulous job. They all take their time in going to all the meetings. Um, unfortunately, a few don't make it, but um, I do want to thank um, our commissioner who did make our last meeting. Thank you. Um, it is important, I think, that um, for the most part, the commissioners all go. The, uh, Captain Silva makes a phenomenal appearance at every single meeting with his staff and lets everyone know what's going on in the community. And the presentation last night, I attended downtown Jewel, phenomenal presentation by all involved. And to that, I am um, truly grateful. Um, my other concern is that there was, uh, I'm not sure, really sure if this is true or not, but there was a special meeting regarding businesses east of federal. I'm not sure. I know Commissioner Meyer, I think you were a part of that. I don't know if that's true or if this is a rumor or, or what. I don't know about that. But um, I know it got uh, the residents in South Palm a little bit. Yeah. And uh, our, our Facebook page kind of goes a little wacko about all this stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Tim, followed by Katie McGivern. Uh, Peter Tim, North Old Street, and yes, I was going to continue with my Baltimore story, but I heard Commissioner McGoy say something that's very close to home, and that was he'd like to have a meeting where, you know, the public can talk to us and we can talk back to the public. Wouldn't that be unusual? Could we have that, please? Well, why, why can't we? Why did you stop talking to us? Why do you think you are so important and so big that we are nothing but servants to you? I don't feel like a servant to you. I feel like I'm your boss. But it's not my way. Now, the mayor has dictated that you may not talk to us. So please don't talk to me. But if you are against it, could you raise your hand, please? So that you can talk to us? Because I'd like to know who I can vote for next election. And if I can't talk to you, I can't vote for you. So I would appreciate it if anybody who is willing to talk to us while we serve would please raise their hands and tell me that you do like me. And I'm not the worst person in the whole thing in the world. Thank you. Katie McGibbon, followed by Loretta Sharp. Hi, Kate McGibbon, 2121 Collier Avenue. A friend of mine owns an apartment on Lucerne Avenue. Uh, next door is a CRA owned lot. It has some trees on it. Um, their tenant has complained to PBSO. People are having sex behind these trees. He's going out finding drug paraphernalia, used condoms. And he calls PBSO, and they try to get there, but the people are usually gone. So my neighbor, who's the owner, called the CRA, complained, and asked them to please, can you clean up that lot, remove the trees? So the CRA got back to her and said, well, that's going to cost about $400, and so we don't have the funds for that. Now, when the CRA tells the citizen that they don't have enough money to clean up their lots, that's a problem for me. I've advocated that the commission should take over the CRA, and I think that's one of the reasons. You cannot look at the CRA's books unless you do take them over. I heard this from my previous inspector general. The only way a city can have 
the CRA books looked at is if the city takes over the CRA and then the uh, IG will come in at no cost and look at the books. I find it amazing that our CRA does, cannot scrape a couple of hundred dollars together. That's amazing. Um, as far as the county has a new policy regarding feral cats, I applaud it. I think it's a wonderful, it's a trap, spay and neuter, clip the ear, vaccinate and release. And this is a common sense solution, quite frankly, way overdue. Just picking up cats, slaughtering them, that's not going to take care of the problem. It hasn't worked. New cats move in, new cats get pregnant. Feral cats, or some of them were house cats, they will defend their territory. If you put these cats back on the street, spayed, neutered, uh, vaccinated, they will usually stay in the same area, defend their um, territories. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta Sharp, followed by Mary Lindsay. Loretta Sharp, North, oh, North K Street. Um, well, I had a lot to talk about, but I, you're going along with me because I did want to listen to at least the presentation of the I TN <laughs> committee. I, I would like to hear them. I'd like to hear what they have to say, and I'd like to be able to ask questions. Uh, the second thing, I totally, Ms. Madam Mayor, agree with Commissioner McCoy. I really think that you have to look at the way you appointed board members before. Uh, I'm on a board. I don't have any problems getting on a board, but I really think that there's so many young people in the neighborhood now, and so many young people getting active in the neighborhood now. If you don't get to know them, and you don't talk to them, and you don't look at them as a group, how are you going to know who to appoint? And, Peter, I love you. <laughs> and you can talk to me anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Mary Lindsay, followed by Tammy Panson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mary Lindsay, 327 Columbia Drive. I want to remind everybody it's June. What does that mean? It's very, very close to Rap Race. The Rap Race t shirts will be available this Friday. Um, they'll be on the front porch at Evening on the Avenues. They'll be available at Andy's Newsstand downtown, Lake Avenue and L Street. They'll also be available for sale at the CRA office. And if there are any other merchants within the sound of my voice that would also like to carry the Rap Race t-shirts, just let me know. Ten dollars, and they're absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if, it, if this happened at the last meeting or not, but uh, Mr. Torsivia, congratulations on um, your award at serving the League of Cities. We are so lucky to have you here in Lake Worth. And thank you always for supporting the neighborhoods the way you do. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Rap Race t-shirts this Friday and evening on the avenues, then, then two weeks. On the third Friday, we have the very first screen on the green. At evening on the avenues, brought to us by our good friends at the CRA. Uh, the movie is um, something too. Dolphins too. Is that Dolphin it? Tales. Oh, yeah. Dolphin yeah. Tales too. Yeah. So it, it's a great thing. Definitely come out for it. Uh, the guys from Scottish Rights are hosting the front porch this Friday, and uh, they're going to be out um, handing out over 200 flags in preparation for Flag Day. We're all looking forward to seeing the, the flags from the Lake Worth Flag Project hung up all over the city. And, uh, you know, long may it wave all the way through the great American Riff Raff Race. Tammy <laughs> 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 Manza. Sorry, I thought there was one other person before we... Um, I wanted to say a couple things before I actually wanted to uh, talk about what I came up here for. Public information officer would be great for Lake Worth to have. There's been a lot of news going around that is started with editorial news rather than actual fact news that can often crucify people. And I think that the city can do a great thing and a great service and it will kill two birds with one stone by having a public information officer where there's a Facebook page, where there's a more um, web activity than just 
searching around on the city website. Um, we need someone to get actually out there and post on Facebook. I've seen a lot of things go into the post lately. We've got a very new active uh, reporter from the Palm Beach Post that's out there. And he's actually including a link that you can find the agenda every week with his uh, intro to what's going on in the city. And that's very nice, but I'd like to see the city lead some of that and present some of that. Um, what I really wanted to come up on, uh, speak about was the ITN committee. I, I was wondering why there's no actual discussion amongst the commission when they had that workshop that they all promised us about the presentations that were valid, that were uh, cleared by the ITN committee, and the ones that were actually possible about the, uh, what you guys have all thought about the possibilities and actual presentation from the committee to the commission in a public format where the ITN committee talks at that seat over there and you guys respond and interact, not making a decision but, but talking about it and maybe presenting the valid and appropriately cleared possibilities that we have for the beach, if there are any or if there are not any. And then also the recommendations that the ITN committee made contradict each other. So we need to clear up what ones you're going to take and which ones you're going to leave. And I'd like to see that in a public format. Thank you. Thank you. John Zerdy. Some discussion on the study that was done already, I think it was 2007, um, and the traffic was about the uh, input uh, at the time for the beach uh, zoning, which was 15% coverage at the time, and it did address all that intensity level, so if you would, I don't know why staff may not have brought that up and had it for discussion, but it seems to be, uh, have been missed. Also, there was a lot of information that I understand that was given to uh, the ITN committee that was changed over at different times for how much could be done, not that much, then a little less, and maybe some, but it was interesting that a study would be asked for at the very end when one of the presentation pr proposers had a, a, a much greater proposal as they negotiated, I would find from going back of what's been posted, it's still posted on the website. and so why a study wasn't asked for back in November, why did we wait? I'd like to see if we can get that cleared up. Um, and then um, that we also didn't uh, get the idea from Greater Bay in terms of the lawsuit. That was, that was caused by uh, continual discussions that shouldn't have taken place uh, that actually caused that to occur to have the city make up that 1.6 million plus expenses. So it wasn't from a situation that you all are in the middle of here right now. Uh, I'm sure you would avoid that whole situation that occurred previously. Uh, a couple things is that I would also recommend you consider northbound traffic only on the upper level. I know it's designed for two ways, but most of the problem is when people are backing out and waiting for someone to come and they can't get around. So you might think about that maybe on <clears throat> other occasions, but that's one of the main reasons I've, I've noticed up there that that occurs. Uh, Everybody, you all are available to go to any of the boards. So, FABs, P and Z, that's how you get to know them, and that's how I got to know those people too. Thanks. So, uh, please um, see if you can get out and about on that as well. And Thank you. Public information officer, please. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. 